Hello, Facebook. Good morning. It's 11.15 if you're tuning in live, 11.12 actually, on the 19th, is it the 19th? 18th, February 18th, Thursday, February 18th. Um, question is, are we open tonight? Uh, I've got a couple phone calls already. Are we open? Um, I don't know if we're going to be open or not. Um, we probably will be open to a certain extent. Um, I can't expect my staff to drive in um, and show up to work in a snowstorm like this. Um, I, but who knows if it's going to stop? Who really knows what's happening? Um, I guess we could get up to a foot of snow. I don't know. Um, I mean, you, know, you never really know, right? Until it happens, um, weather forecasts are notoriously wrong. Um, Jamie and I um, live here. We live in the building. We live upstairs. So for us to open the door and cook a couple of things, um, pizzas or whatever, is really not an issue. Um, we're not encouraging anybody to go out and drive when the roads are not safe. Um, hey, Bill, how's it going? Hello, everybody who's tuning in. Um, who's off today, by the way? Who's got a snow day today? I know some school districts are closed, um, so some teachers are off today. Um, Jamie's out on a walk right now in the snow. I'm going to go for a run in a bit. Um, but we're not encouraging anybody to drive in the snow. Uh, however, we're always surprised when we are open in the snow because people will walk to us from in town or they're on the road to begin with and um, they'll stop in. And even sometimes people that are out plowing stop in um, and are hungry and eat, right? So there still are people on the road, even though we're not encouraging anybody to be on the road, or there's still people are that are going out. And it's great that, uh, you know, um, in a snowstorm, people can walk from a couple blocks away and come into downtown Ellenville and on the Canal Street and, um, and, um, and enjoy a good meal. So um, are we going to, Joel saying it's a snow, uh, it's a pool day. Uh, thank you, Joel, for dropping that comment. Joel's in Arizona. Um, so good morning, everybody else is tuning in. Hi, Douglas. Um, oh, Megan, sorry to hear. Six weeks snow day. I broke my arm three weeks. So, so sorry to hear that. Um, hi, Aileen. Aileen, are you off today? Do you have a snow day? Um, hi, Sarah. Um, Thomas. Um, Kaylin, good morning, everybody who's tuning in. A um, bunch of people. Um, so, um, I'm here working in the office right now. Um, I'm in the process of designing um, a new Aromatime glass. So, um, we're at the drawing board right now. So, that's the pint glass. That's a new pint glass that we're thinking about um, um, doing. But I, as, as I'm getting ready to upload the image here and press... Um, send and the order in. I'm like, what if we did something really fun on a pint glass, on our glasses, our logo glasses? What if we did something really fun um, where, I don't know, maybe a QR code to some kind, I don't know, to get you to somewhere else, to be interactive. Um, what if we, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, I'm looking for ideas here. What if we took a, a guest quote? Um, what if we took a guest quote and put it on our pint glass and um, your name was on there with a quote. I don't know, something fun. I'm trying to think of something fun um, to do. That might be a good thing, get people involved in here. Um, so that's it right there. That's our logo right now for the pint glass. Um, so um, I don't know, we'll think, we'll think of something. Um, got a great email the other day. Got a really fantastic email the other day. Um, I love getting emails like this. And I get these a lot on my YouTube channel. I just can't keep up. If you've commented on my YouTube channel, I literally cannot keep up with the comments on there. We have um, 20 million views, 93,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, and the comments come in nonstop. And I apologize if you've commented on our YouTube videos at any time in the past I haven't answered. I, I personally can't keep up. Um, it's impossible to keep up. If you look every day, just you know, another 100 comments, another 100 comments um, with 20-something million views, that happens. Um, so. We got an e and I get emails there all the time. People watch our health videos. People have changed their lives. Um, they've watched, you know, whatever real food video I put up there, and they started doing their own research, and things changed, and there's just, you know, their health is a whole different situation than it was a year ago. I love getting emails like that. We got an email the other day um, from somebody who's never been here, started watching our videos, um, made a comment that, you know, people had made, I'm not gonna, I, I don't like, to, I don't say anybody's names unless you give me permission. Um, but they basically said, you know, 
people always told me that your restaurant was for rich people. Um, and she goes, now that I'm researching um, and into healthy food, it's just, I understand that you care about the food you're serving. Um, and as a result of this person doing research, this person has lost, I don't know, 200 pounds or something. They have 100 pounds to go. Um, I don't want to get too descriptive, um, but they've lost literally 200 pounds. They have 100 pounds to go, and it's because they're eating real food and researching the food they eat and um, basically saying, you know, people told me your restaurant was for rich people, and it's not. It's just that you guys care about the food that you're serving. Um, and I don't think we're expensive. Um, Jamie and I go out to eat at other places that serve... Um, you know, I know they're using cheap oil to cook with. I know they're using genetically modified foods. I know they're not taking the care that we do, even in the salt. Right down there, and we're passionate about the food, and we want to um, want to keep everybody healthy, right? Everybody healthy, eat healthy food, healthy food supply. So that's that's our angle, and that's what we've that's what we've always uh, been doing. So um, Joel saying, eat local, buy local, shop at Roman time for the best quality food. Thank you, Joel. Um, something Jamie and I started, um, and we're growing this more and more now, is our grocery business. Our grocery business was a huge, huge hit for us last year, um, uh, financial revenue-wise, and people just loved our, loved the, and we do lots of groceries every week. We pack, um, we pack lots of groceries to go uh, for locals. Now we're getting into the Airbnbs. Airbnbs are something that are just thriving in the area, thriving. Guests are coming up every week from from Brooklyn, from the city, from the metro metro New York area. Um, they're coming over from Connecticut. Um, and our Airbnb, somebody came over and stayed from New Windsor, of all places. They came over from New Windsor because they had friends coming in from Connecticut. So people are coming from all over to these Airbnbs in our area. And so now Jamie and I are stocking Airbnbs. We send our list out to the host. The host gets our list and sends it out to the guests coming in. And before the guest even checks in, we can come in and stock the refrigerators. Um, Grass-fed steaks, salmon, um, you name it. Um, pasta, tomatoes, bananas, um, organic bananas. Of course, most of the stuff is organic. A lot of it's local. Uh, ground beef, uh, local trees of sausage, uh, good high-quality bacon, local eggs, organic tomato juice, H&H &H bagels. So we can have everything stocked in. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time when they're going to these Airbnbs. I know because now that we have an Airbnb, I see what people bring in and they spend a lot of time going shopping and this and that and they get here and they want to go shopping again. And um, when they discover that we have a grocery service, they're like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. So Jamie and I are focusing on that more. So if you're an Airbnb host that's in our area, please reach out to us. We're getting ready to send out more emails. I go through Airbnb um, through uh, the other hosts and I send emails out every so often. I don't want to send up 50 emails out at once then I don't want to get overwhelmed. So we sort of beta tested it with a couple and now we do a couple more and then a couple more and then a couple more so we don't grow too fast or, or this gets out of hand where we disappoint people. Um, so that's something that Jamie and I are working on. The same high quality ingredients that are here. I tell people our groceries, um, same not the same stuff, but similar items, similar quality, um, some same products you can get in Whole Foods, but just at a better price. Um, I'd rather move product and uh, keep inventory fresh and be able to provide something. Literally, when we go to, when we go to price something, like we just brought in Dr. Bronner's, the liquid soaps, we've been buying them for ourselves. I had somebody that came in the other day and bought dental floss, um, our, our uh, Young Living dental floss, and they bought mouthwash uh, from us. And they bought, because if we're buying it for ourselves, which we buy through our distributor, we'll typically buy a case at a time. So when Jamie and I buy mouthwash, we buy six or 12 mouthwash. It's just easier. It's the organic brand we buy or whatever. And now we're taking this stuff and putting it on our grocery shelves and people are like, oh my gosh, this, this lady the other night says, uh, if, you have, if you have dental floss, this will literally save me a trip to Walgreens right now. I can buy everything. I, I, the mouthwash is on there. Everything, I got all my food. I got the bottle, two bottles of wine. I got dinner prepared tonight. All I need to do is make one stop at Walgreens. And I don't want to stop at Walgreens or Walmart for dental floss. Do you have any? I'm like, yeah, of course. You know, we just, we literally just got a case of dental floss in. So I threw dental floss on, um, <laughs> on there. Um, so for us, it's not about making these big margins on those items. Um, what we do is we typically go online and look at Instacart or Whole Foods or something, Amazon, and we price compare. And where we can find the average price on there is what we put it on our grocery shelf for. Um, so the Dr. Bronner's, we don't make much on the Dr. Bronner soaps, um, but I'd rather 
make two or three dollars um, a big on a big bottle um, and be able to sell a couple more a month and buy a couple more than to actually um, just have it you know sitting and not doing anything. I'd rather you know to add on to somebody's into somebody's um, um, shopping basket here when they come into the restaurant. So. Um, if it's not on our shelves, just ask because um, a lot of times we have here, literally in our office here on the other side here, like we have so many organic shampoos, shaving cream, all this kind of stuff that we just, we literally buy for Jamie and I from our wholesale distributor, the same company that supplies Whole Foods. We just buy a case at a time and we've always been doing that for years. So um, saves us money too. So that's, um, so you'll see more and more of these things hitting our shelves um, like that. So are we open tonight? Um, the question, that's the question. Not quite sure. We'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens. Um, last week we closed three days and it was nice to have three days off where we're not like opening the restaurant. Um, but I got to be honest with you, Jamie and I were talking this morning about our why and, you know, and what, what really like, um, like what drives us, our mission statement, like, like, like what is our, what, what is the big picture of, of who we are personally? And through my coaching programs, we say our why all the time to our coaching buddy or to our coach or whatever, and we go over our why and, and we make sure that we're living our why. And you know, Jamie and I, part of our why, both of us, both of us is connectiveness, connecting with other people, building a friendship, um, having a community. And I gotta tell you, like last night, we were sitting at the bar. Um, we had a wine salesman come in, drop off a couple of bottles of wine and leave us there. And we're, her and I are sitting at the bar and we're like, where's everybody right now? Like we enjoy being around people. We enjoy the restaurant industry. We enjoy the hospitality industry. We enjoy seeing people. We enjoy that interaction. We're sitting at the bar and even though Jamie and I really obviously enjoy each other, but we're like, um, I wonder what some friends are doing. <laughs> Text some friends and like see what's going on. So that's part of our our why is just you know that that community. And I think so when we were closed three days last week, it was like we we're almost like a little bored. Like the restaurant's not opening tonight. Um, there's no people coming in. We're not seeing people. Um, so um, I guess um, tonight could be a night that we're closed. I'm just not sure. But you know we really honestly enjoy um, meeting new people, um, seeing friends, seeing all of you, um, and that's you know. Like, like, for example, I know like if, if we ever had to close the restaurant or something ever happened, like I could easily reach out to a lot of people in our network now from the restaurant to get a job, um, to, to do whatever, um, to carry on. Um, cause we've made a lot of amazing, amazing friends here, um, through the restaurants and we, Jamie and I really, really appreciate, um, um, all of you that are, that are really part of our, our family here and that have gotten to watch our kids grow up and, and that, that support us that come in, um, and um, you know it's, it's it's fantastic, really really fantastic. So hopefully we'll be open tonight. Jamie and I live here. We live upstairs now. About two, two and a half, two years ago, yeah, about two years ago. I don't know, a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, we got rid of our house. And uh, Courtney and Justin are older now, off to college. Um, we got rid of our house. We moved in upstairs. We rented, we own we the restaurant building. And we renovated upstairs, put a lot of money in upstairs, renovated, made it really nice, made a beautiful apartment upstairs. And um, I gotta tell you, it was one of the, one of the things that um, was awesome for us to be able to do that. And um, we only live four blocks away anyway. But having two buildings um, anywhere, you, most of you know that there's taxes involved and a lot of taxes in New York. So for us, it was a big savings to help us you know, get rid of that one big tax bill and to continue on to do what we do here at the restaurant, um, which is, you know, provide high quality, um, uncompromisable food, uh, ingredient wise to, to everybody. So it's helped us, it's helped us, um, keep moving our business forward. And, um, of course, freed up a little cash, um, flow, which is fantastic. Um, not maintaining two properties and living in, and we would have Airbnb the house out, but it just wasn't in the proper neighborhood to do that. When you do an Airbnb, you really, you can't like have a house like in a neighborhood specifically. Um, people like to be out in the country. You can't, you can do stuff in neighborhoods and there are, there are successful places. Um, but you know, you really have to analyze the neighborhood and make sure you don't, you know, make the neighbors mad and, and have stuff around for people to do and walk to and things like that. And so, plus the house needed a lot of work, needed a lot of work. And we decided to put all that work into the restaurant. Um, let's see. So, um, stay tuned for tonight. Jamie will do our Facebook live a little later at four o'clock and 
we'll keep it reposted if we're uh, uh, going um, to be open tonight. If we are open tonight, we'll be doing our nine ninety nine nine ninety nine specials, which are um, this week we're doing vegan bratwurst, two vegan brats with sauerkraut and pretzel buns for nine ninety nine, and we're doing um, pulled pork sandwich for nine ninety nine. Uh, so our pulled pork, smoked smoked pulled pork, it's smoked for five, six hours, and we sous vide it for 12 hours, and it's super tender, it's awesome stuff. Um, so we are doing those uh, two 999 specials. Their takeout specials are available until Sunday. Um, thank you everybody last week who purchased our Valentine's Day box. That was a huge hit. Um, one of the events that we have coming up that I haven't spoken about much because we really haven't planned it is our... Um, is our vintage run. Every year we do this vintage run. Um, typically, typically the vintage run, um, the vintage run uh, is a fun run that we do here. We have followed with a wine tasting. And we usually have like 70 people that come to this. This year we have to severely modify the vintage run um, to probably only 20 to 25 people so we can socially distance. And then everybody will get the wine tastings at the table. So basically, for the last five, six years, 70 people get together. We line up here on the street and we run through Ellenville and come back and do this great wine tasting. Like I said, it's usually 70 people and it sells out. So we're going to launch that this next week here. It's March 7th, I believe, is the date. And we can literally only take 20, 25 people to social distance. We don't want to stop the momentum of that run. It's a really fun run. Um, and um, we'll do everything we can to make that run safe. Um, somebody made a comment um, about our wine trip, to, wine trips to the Finger Lakes. Um, you know, if we take temperatures, you know, all these things that we do. Um, so we do not take temperatures of people when we um, when we go on our trip. If you're not feeling well, do not go. Um, we wear masks on the bus. Um, we socially distance. The wineries that we go to um, are usually have special private spaces for us. We don't go into the main tasting rooms. If we go into the main tasting rooms, there's no other guests there. So the owners of the wineries segregate us as well. Um, if you're uncomfortable, I've said this before, in any situation, in any situation going out, don't go out. Um, stay home, nothing wrong with it. Um, but like if you come to a restaurant, any restaurant, make them crazy about you know this or that. We had a guest here last week. Valentine's Day, I think, that, you know, saw people next to them stand up without a mask on, um, and they, you know, gave us a bad review on Yelp because of that, um, and because they said they didn't like the food, but they really emphasized the other part as well. Um, you have to expect that if you're going out, um, that if you're going out, that you are going to encounter people, and you are going to, to, um, to, um, um, be in contact. I was having a discussion with somebody recently and I posed a hypothetical to them. I said, would you rather walk into a big Z, um, not a big store, but like into a Walmart, would you rather walk into a store without a mask on and be in control of everything you touch, knowing not anybody else has touched it, going through, you know, not having to touch anything or go into the store with a mask on, go get all your items that you know have been touched by all the staff there, Put them in a basket, wheel the basket around that you know is touched by the staff, the person before you, go into a line, um, wait in line, put all this stuff onto the counter, have the staff member who's been sitting there for four or five, standing there for four, five, six hours, touching their mask up and down, touching everybody's groceries, everybody's Band-Aid box, everybody's toothbrush <laughs> container, you know, as it's coming through the line in a Walmart, who's been touching their face, their mask, touching all these things, and then touching, grabbing your stuff, and putting it into a bag for you to take home. I pose this as a type of hypothetical to somebody, and they're like, well, now that you put it that way, I really never thought about that, and I really don't, like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't want to freak you out, but, like, but, like, there's, like, if you're scared of all this, like, there are, you know, don't go out and make other people, like, like freaked out. Don't go to a restaurant, you're just not ready for it, which is no problem, but... Hypothetically, like, would you walk in without a mask on knowing you have control of everything and have no other true contact with anybody touching your stuff and touching their mask for a five-hour shift and touching everything that's gone through the conveyor belt as you're doing it or or what? And they're like, I can't answer you, Marcus, now that you put it that way. I, I don't know what, what the right answer is. So um, just a hypothetical I pose to somebody. Um, so um, I do know one thing that your mask, when you wear your mask, 
especially when you wash your mask, there are these particles that start shedding off of your mask. And these particles can get into your lungs. And chances are these particles that get into your system that start going down will never come out, which could cause issues later. Um, we don't know because this is all so new. This, this, perm, this, this mask wearing for us on a regular basis is all so new. So we don't know what's happening in five or 10 years with the particles that we're ingesting that are getting into our lungs. We of course know what happened with asbestos. Um, that's no secret. So, um, what's the future of this? We don't know. So, you know, so if you see surgeons and things like doctors, they're one mask and gone, one mask and gone, one mask and gone. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't have that luxury or don't think about one mask and gone. It's wear that mask all day, wash it, if we even wash it, um, wear it the next day, wear it for two, three days, wash it again, and then, you know, keep repeating the cycle of washing this. And of course, whether it's cotton or synthetic, there are pieces that actually come out of there and can go into your system. If you saw me cooking this summer out front, I'm a huge fan of the mask, of the shield. The shield is, I'm a huge fan of the shield versus a mask. Um, and the health department says, Marcus, you're po perfectly in compliant. The shield is fine. Now they have all these other shields that I will just like, um, um, you know, go onto your nose and come down these little tiny shields. When this first happened, we were in um, New York City at a food show. And before, this was like when the first thing came out, like make sure you're washing your hands and don't shake hands with anybody. That was what happened last March. And I was at a food show. I was speaking three days there, doing 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 three speaking um, topics for restaurant owners on marketing. And there was this one Asian company there that had these things that clipped on and the, came from your chin and it went up above your nose. And Jamie and I looked and we're like, that kind of looks a little ridiculous. You know, this wasn't, the masks weren't even required at the time yet. And they were there trying to sell this product. And I wished now I could have gotten that product because that was like, that's a cool product. This is a mini shield that starts from here and goes up and, you know, and comes up and covers. And I was like, that's really cool. Um, of course, I don't didn't even know how to get a hold of that product. But our restaurant suppliers, all the restaurant suppliers sell these shields um, for, for, for staff at restaurants. And some, I had one person this summer that preferred the shield over the mask. Um, something else I'm super excited about is um, somebody from the New York State Economic um, Forum re re reached out to us to see if we needed any help and assistance and things like that. And when she heard my story about how 2020 was a success for us and how we pivoted and how we, you know, kept moving forward. Um, they, um, they now have me like helping and speaking on panels to help other restaurants. So that's really positive. And then the New York restaurant show that's happening in July, um, they called me, um, and I went through my story with them and they're like, well, we definitely need to have you back to speak to all these other restaurant owners. Um, you're one of the very few rest. We're looking, they were specifically looking for restaurant owners, operators that operate the restaurant that had increases in sales and had a positive story for uh, 2020. And of course, when I told them my story, she's like, oh my gosh, you guys are crushing it, killing it. You need to share this story with all these other restaurant owners. So would you come speak? And I said, absolutely, I'll come speak. So I'm kind of excited and happy that the speaking engagements are coming back now. Um, I think that's a very positive sign and that, that trade shows are looking at, um, at resuming um, at certain capacities. Um, so that's really, really exciting. So I can't wait to, to get in, on a stage again and, and especially share all of um, the techniques that we did during COVID that helped the restaurant flourish. Um, as I was going over the whole list, I was like, gee, this is worthy of a book. And so um, I spoke to my previous co-author um, the other day, who helped me write this book, 50 Mistakes That Business Owners Make. I spoke to Carl. Um, and I said, Carl, it's, I mean, it might be time to write another book about COVID. Um, everybody still needs to eat. And that's what, I, that's what we told all of our coaching clients. Everybody still needs to eat. And um, you just have to figure out how to get food to them. And these are different ways to get food to them now. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe writing a book or maybe doing some good audio content and, and doing that as my speech going forward is everybody still needs to eat recipes for surviving COVID in the restaurant industry um, as like a little tagline. So our success recipes for, for COVID in the restaurant industry, I'll be able to share everything that we've done here with other restaurant owners um, across, across the country or even more than that. I think some of the things that we've done here 
um, are going to be permanent moving forward. And not, not, not as far as the safety issues, but as far as, you know, our grocery lists, um, as far as the way we communicate with you, our guests, um, the constant communication, the transparency, um, the just getting on Facebook Lives like this and just communicating and not selling anything. Um, so there's a lot of things that we did. Um, the amount of, of, of FaceTime Lives, Facebook Lives we did, the amount of this, the amount, the amount of communication and emails. I think there's a lot of things that, that if you take this and move this forward into the next segment, the next year, two, three years, um, and the, even, even on the backside of the operations, like do you need to be open seven days a week? Do you need to be open lunches all the time? Do you, we did things, we did things during COVID that we were scared of doing. We never wanted to close brunch because, oh my gosh, we're gonna lose $300 in sales. Meantime, to fire up the gas, turn on the electric, turn the heat on or the air conditioners, get the staff in early, have them stay late the night after, before and prep the stuff for three, $400 in, in sales or $500 in sales, how much really is absorbed by all the costs to really make it profitable? But as a restaurant owner, you think, well, gee, if they're not coming to my restaurant, they're going to another person's restaurant and I gotta have them in my restaurant because I need sales. And sometimes it's just not a profitable equation. So um, these are all things that we, Jamie and I really looked into, um, how we were able to manage labor um, properly get our numbers in line, increase our volume, increase value, increase communications. So I have this whole thing charted out right now that I'm gonna start doing for the speeches that, that people want me to talk about. And it will just fit so much into and perfect into a book here that um, restaurants could use starting t tomorrow with any of the advice or that um, moving forward in a year, two, three years out that they could, um, that they could uh, uh, benefit from. I'm having f a dinner with uh, a friend next week who owns several restaurants. Um, in the New York City area, and I'm gonna go down and um, have dinner with them, and, and share my success story with him, um, and um, and yeah, just you know, talk to other people about this kind of stuff. So, Joel says, "When do you sleep?" I've never seen anyone <laughs> do as much as you guys do. Um, sleep, yeah, um, sleep happens. Sleep does happen. Um, I'm the kind of person because I work so much. Um, or I'm always active doing something, whether it's work or running or doing something active. I'm the kind of person, if I sit down at nine o'clock at night, you ask friends, 10 o'clock at night, if I sit down and you see me doze off, I can fall asleep anywhere like that. I mean, I'm just, I, when I hit that point, I'm done. I don't know what it's like to have insomnia. I have no idea what it's like to lay in bed not being able to sleep. I have no idea. Literally when I get into bed, I'm out. Jamie says I'm out within 30 seconds. But I wake up, you know, I wake up, five, I'm awake at 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, I'm awake, um, listening to something, or Jamie and I are talking, relaxing, um, listening to a podcast. Um, so sleep does happen, and I'm, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to be a really good sleeper um, and be able to, to fall asleep like that uh, very, very quickly. I hear some people, how they just can't get to sleep, and I'm not like that. And maybe because of my workload, um, I don't know. Um, but Jamie even said to me this morning while we're laying in bed, she goes, your mind is on so many different things right now. I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm like, my mind is full engaged right now with thinking about X, Y, Z, this business thing, that business thing. Um, Jamie and I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, a lot of business stuff, a lot of health stuff too. I listen to a lot of health stuff. When I get out from my run, I just throw the earbuds in and I just start running. And, um, and it's great, and I just start listening to stuff. But lately, I've been listening to a lot of Brad Lee, L-E-A, Brad Lee. I've seen him speak before in Vegas, and um, he has a great company called Lightspeed VT, which is a virtual training company. Uh, but his podcast, his business podcast, just he has great guests on there, really, really great guests um, that just make you just think about things and understand that there's, you know, the limitations that we have on our finances, on our, on our, physical, whatever it is, uh, is all from our mindset and we're just not in the proper mindset. And um, so it's, Jamie and I get very inspired listening to other people's success stories um, and how they came from nothing and, and built this or built that or succeeded in that. So Brad Lee, it's a great business podcast called Dropping Bombs. He's out of Vegas. Um, and I can't wait to see him speak again. He's supposed to be doing a, supposed to be doing something in Vegas in April um, that I'd love to attend. Let's see if we can... Um, pull that off uh, safety wise and logistic wise Jamie and I would love to go see him speak again um, and that's it 
All right, folks, I'm going to get off now. Um, I have a bunch of work to do. Uh, my virtual assistant is messaging me here. We got to finish this pint glass thing. And so uh, that's it. Hopefully we'll talk to everybody soon. And um, that's it. We'll talk to you later. Everybody stay safe. Drive safe if you're out there driving. Don't go out if you don't have to go out. And stay tuned. We'll make the announcement later if we're open.